Hey guys, welcome to my Reiner deck profile for Everfest. Um, this is a deck that I've been brewing with for the past few weeks. You've seen some of the videos uh, of the matches with this deck. And I finally got it to the point where I really think that this is a big contender for this current meta for Everfest. Um, I want to do it with, without further ado, but I think there's a few things that we need to discuss before we go into the deck profile. Right now, this meta is very much a combat trick heavy meta, so you can't really just go into a game just with raw damage and win every single game. You really need to plan your, your deck out before you verse every single hero. And because we are like an off meta hero, we can kind of just catch our opponents off guard. So I'll start off with the equipment. Um, the equipment is probably one of the biggest slots, which is why it takes 10 pieces in uh, this deck profile. So we've got our skull cap and then we've got our skull horn. These days I'm not just using this for um, for arcane barrier but the main reason why I use skull horn now is if we need to go into a YOLO brute strategy we can simply just go skull cap, discard a random card from our hand, uh, draw a discard and then either in Tim turn on our claws um, and then this also comes up in the prism matchup as well because if they simply put down an aura, we just crack this, swing face, and then swing claw at one of their um, one of their auras. Um, and of course, our weapons. Because I'm not a bad player, I will always try and make a build where you can use romping club and mandible claws in the exact same build. I think you're very stupid if you just want to rely on one side and not rely on the other. Um, and Reinar's an amazing hero for this because he facilitates for for all roles and basically his deck isn't really much of a utility well it's more of a utility than more of a, a full game plan um, a good rhino player will know how to like bring someone down low enough with whatever cards they have um, but yeah so metal claws and romping club then we've got our gambler's gloves skull crushers null room gloves um, despite my hate against Gambler's Gloves. This serves the same purpose against Prism and is literally only in here because of Prism. We want to destroy their auras whenever they come up on the field. Unfortunately, it does take one of our equipment slots, but in my opinion, over the Skull Crushers and the Null Room Gloves, it's the best option that we really have against them because one, they don't care about damage. And of course, they only deal arcane damage with a, um, What's it called? Merciful Retribution. So Gambler's Gloves is just going to have to take that slot. Um, I would have really liked to use Goliath Gauntlet or... What's the other one? Goliath Gauntlet or Brave Forge Braces in this slot. But I think we really needed to at least deal with the Prism Auras as soon as they come up. And then our one Tunic and then Scab Skins. Of course Scab Skins is an auto include in every deck list and basically find or spring tunic as well um, but yeah so usually we just a uh, tunic abuse deck but of course we have a lot of other combat tricks as well so we'll go straight on to the deck profile it's a not a Reinar deck without three alpha rampage because alpha rampage is our specialization of course three massacre three swing big so this is your main package of bi dealing big damage in one big hit. Um, these are solid cards, all of them block. And of course, Massacre gains the double win team, of course. Swing Big is an amazing addition to the deck, but usually is only amazing, amazing when we're able to um, uh, get it off a Blood Rush Bellows because it's basically one cost less uh, over a Massacre. This is where the deck profile goes a little bit swingy. We have our no block package with three pulping. As you've seen, I've really liked using pulping recently. Three wild ride and then two bear fangs. Um, so the wild ride, I would really like to bump down to two. But the reason why wild ride is at three is because if we need to go into a YOLO brute strategy, just having more sixes is what we need. Um, and because, you know, if we randomly get the discard, we get the, um, the, the go again on this. 
usually I just do prefer pulping nine times out of ten because if they're if you don't get the discard the only discard effect that you get off this is that it gains dominate and if they're if we're able to strip two cards from their hand that's good enough in my opinion and then the two bear fangs so bear fangs is a card I can never play at three because I feel like it's always a bricky card it's amazing when you put in your arsenal and then can do a setup turn with it but bear fangs on itself you know uh, two for eight is amazing but uh, I can't bring myself to running this at three. I would have even just ran it at one, but you know, we'd still need more six attacks. We've got our blocking six attack package that's red. So, breakneck battery. I'm a high advocate for this card because, like, if it's a three card combo where you can go like swing with breakneck battery, discard a card, use tunic, and then uh, swing with club which is 11 damage. Of course, these cards do it a lot better now, like Wild Ride and Pulping. But this is just if you're able to play a more slower game. We've got Pact Hunt and three Command & Conquer. Can't go wrong with Command & Conquer, though it isn't a Brute card, of course. But being able to threaten the Arsenal is always great, and Pact Hunt is just an amazing staple for the deck because it just has Intim and gets us out of the situations that, you know, like just swinging with this is more than enough. So we go into our yellows. So our uh, barraging bighorn, uh, beast within, of course, an auto include in every single brute deck, no matter what brute you are. Uh, three railed up, and then three smash instinct. Um, all these, you know, of course, the, this side is really just a, you know, like I want to say deck filler, but it is yellow. It is six attack. Sometimes you get the plus one effect off this, especially now that we have a lot of draw discard effects. Um, so sometimes this can come in for seven, but it doesn't really matter. And you know, six with Intimidate, just on a yellow stick is amazing. Beast Within is amazing off the top now for we are able to draw and discard. Um, the Beast Within, same as the Massacre, something I didn't say earlier. Um, and yeah, of course, Blood Rush Billows turns, just, I've, I've felt like I really had to up, up, bump up my six attack, um, six attacks in this deck because how many times I miss um, like beast within triggers. So sometimes I'd be taking four or five damage. But yeah, and bar barraging big horn um, serves the same purpose as like let's say um, bulping. But of course this is uh, it's still deck filler, but y you can you know make it work. Uh, and then the three blue Wrecker Romp. Um, I don't like in the other colors. I think you really, really have to like stretch your deck if you want to play this in red or yellow. Um, this is just a staple blue, of course, in every single deck. Um, I don't like messing around with the other colors because in my opinion, they just don't do the job that they should be doing. So now to our non-attacks. Wouldn't be Ryanar without our package of six Barraging Bighorns, uh, Barraging Beatdowns. Um, Usually I am pit just pitching these until the late game and then I can get a big intim game off them. Uh, Blood Rush Bellows. Sometimes you could even cut this card, but in my opinion, um, you know, it is the strongest card in Brute. And when I say you can cut it is just when you want to play club and play a really, really want slow game. But you have enough options to where you, you, you should just be playing this. Um, and then two tear limb from limb. So this this card here is solely in here for the YOLO brute strategy, where if we're versing a viscerai, we don't have a late game against them. If we're versing um, mainly just viscerai, right? Viscerai has such an amazing late game, such an amazing mid game, and if we're able to just take the game from them when they have 20 health, we can just play tear limb from limb and then play a swing big or an alpha rampage, come in for 19, uh, 18 or 16 damage. But that's not, if we're able to set it up with a blood rush bellows and everything, it's really, really good. Um, this also pairs well with another card in the, in the deck as well. This is more experimental than more push damage. Uh, more experimental than like 
uh, like full-fledged plan. This is a pinch card situation if we really, really, really need it. Um, and because it's in blue, we usually won't, we aren't even blocking with this anyways. And because of the, the YOLO brute strategy where we aren't blocking anyways, it doesn't matter. So yeah, uh, two tear limb from limb. It's blue. Uh, it has an amazing effect. Basically, it just says deal six or deal eight or deal nine in the right circumstances. But yeah, uh, it, it feels good to play, but then it also feels really bad. So yeah. Uh, that's tear limb from them. Um, and then three high roller. I love high roller. It's just a blue int him. If you're trying to get the six on this, you know, it doesn't matter. I was playing this in red for a while, but I felt like the meta was too shape shifty, where it didn't really matter if we were playing a late game against them. Um, so yeah, uh, high roller, blue int him, more than more than needed. Um, and then we've got Sand Sketch Plans. Sand Sketch Plans is an MVP today. Um, if we're able to search out the Blood Rush, no, not the Blood Rush Bellows. Well, you can search out Blood Rush Bellows turn one, or you can go the Beast Within. Um, and in my opinion, sometimes just pulping on its own is good enough to search off this. Getting two action points, uh, intiming. Amazing early, amazing late. So then our combat tricks. Um, so we've got Faith for Scenes if we need to play the defensive club build. We've got our Sink Belows. Um, sink Belows, the same thing usually when you're playing a slower game, you just keep these in and then take out all the non-blocking cards and then the other way around. But then we also have two even bigger than that. I really like even bigger than that. It does something that Reiner always needed, which is to create a Quicken token. Um, so we're able to go swing with the six attack and swing with the club after but the main reason why this card is great is when we need to go into that full aggro mode uh, of YOLO brute um, We're able to opt three Which is amazing for Reiner. We're able to see the top card of our deck. We're able to draw a card But the bigger thing is that we're able to dig dig even deeper to get to our blood rush bellows wherever they went yeah, to dig even deeper to get to our Blood Rush Bellows. Uh, <laughs> this card on its own, is, of course, just says, uh, you know, draw a card and create a Quicken token. But it's so much more than that in Brute because because of all the draw, discard, random cards, um, it does feel really bad to keep in your hand and then keep in your arsenal. But one thing people need, like forgot about this card is that Every single brute attack is dealing six to eight damage or six to nine damage, so we're always adding a card off this. Everyone's saying, "Oh, this is the the um, what's it called? The Katsu card? No, no, this this is the brute card. This this card was made for brute." But yeah, uh, even bigger than that, um, I found playing this at three being extremely bricky, um, so I've bumped it only down to two. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of two ofs in this deck. And then we've got our one reckless swing. I would be playing this at two, but I felt like this current meta, um, I had one option of playing tear limb from limb at one and then reckless swing at two. And my personal opinion, one is more than enough, especially if you're able to read your opponent and then read a few, read a few, read a few turns ahead. If you notice that it's going to come down into a grinding halt, we need to just arsenal this card and then play it on them. Most plays are just playing around Reckless Swing, so getting them down to three health is more than enough because they need to always stay at two health, or more than two health. Um, against Starvo, this is nothing at all because they can just go crown ability, shuffle away their arsenal, um, reduce the cost or reduce the damage by one. So that's why it's if Starvo wasn't such a big prevalent thing in this game, um, this would definitely be it too. Just because they're able to reduce the cost by one, I'll uh, reduce the damage by one. So yeah, uh, that's it for my deck profile. Um, I probably won't be changing this for the ProQuest. I think I'm I've got it where I really like it right now. Um, and of course I'll be doing a lot more matches um, I'll also try and stop shuffling my hand of course because you know old habits die hard but yeah uh, that's it for the deck profile I'll see you in the next one peace